Just watch a little bit of a review uh, of these kind. In a test, you're going to see one section like this. Uh, I think it's the bottom of the test, although it's been at the top of your worksheets. Uh, it will be worth 15 points, maybe uh, as much as 20. I'm not sure exactly. But either way, these are the kind you can mostly do in your heads, and you should use your head to do them. To go from 5 to 2, you know, probably not an intuitive ratio. So which one would you want to do first, even for an easy number like 10? 1. Which L, which, yeah, which is CS2, CS2. right? Okay. So uh, if this guy is going to be one-fifth of this size, what's one-fifth of 10? Two. Two. Oh, and by the way, something I noticed in your worksheets, I'm going to get back to you in a few minutes. It's not just two. It's one. 2.0. Oh, and it is moles. Exactly. Now, uh, the moles part, I left out, I didn't care about the units because I figured everything's moles here for, for this chart. However, the significant figures, if you did enough of those wrong, you did lose a point. All right, um, because it is two stiff. Well, it's actually two point zero zero because this guy's three significant figures. This guy's two. He should all have two. Okay. Now, um, I've got that guy. Where should I go to now? This is a one. That's a two. This makes it easy. What do I, What do you think that guy's going to be? This guy's a two. He's a four. All right. And uh, if that guy is twice as big as that guy, he's going to be eight. So you see, you could use a little common sense and do these. Um, and by the way, that would be 4.00 and 00 for significant figure sake. Okay. Now, I'm not going to do all of these, but I just want to show you not all of them are easy enough to do. So say you get a guy, like you want to go from here, from here to here, and you're given that number. And you can't, re and there's no other way you could do it. Well, you can, and there will be room to show, or you can just use the back of the paper, to show the work. Okay. If I can't see how to go from here to here, and I can't in my head do that. I write down 0.042 moles of what? What do I have? 0.042 moles of what? Carbon. Okay. And then I have to do the conversion to get this guy right here. So moles of carbon goes on the bottom because it has to cancel. Moles of what you're looking for goes on the top. Who am I looking for? I'm looking for moles of SO2. How do I fill those in to get the correct answers? With the coefficients. Coefficient of SO2 is 2. Go for this guy's a five, and then you would simply multiply and divide. That's the exact same step you do in every word problem and show it to me. But there are a few, perhaps, even on the sheet today, that you'll have to do that for, even for the charts. Most of them you can do in your head, and you should do, be able to do them in your head by just kind of like picking the easiest ones out. Now, I have two examples left to do that are really part of your notes. There's another uh, little thing we're going to do on Monday called a limiting reactant, and there's something else with an extra credit uh, kind of problem. But basically, this is the end. All right, this is the end of the types of problems. I've got come uh, to the, uh, you know, all the possibilities I could get to, I will do today. All right. Check that problem out. Cause you copy it down. Let me, let's see if you can tell what's different about this one. You copy him down. What do you notice is different? You know stoichiometry is moles to moles, right? So normally if I give you moles or if I ask you for moles, it makes the problem easier. Well, this guy doesn't give you moles at all, and it doesn't ask you for moles. So there's moles aren't anywhere in the problem, which is going to make this about as long as these problems get, with the exception of the extra credit one. All right, let me show you. Keep this in mind before I begin the problem. What is stoichiometry? What step has to be there? What to what? Moles to moles. I don't always have to have moles to grams or grams to moles, but I always have to have moles to moles. Always. So, keeping that in mind when we get down to the stoichiometry part, when we get down to the actual conversions, keep that in mind. But first, it starts out like any other stoichiometry problem. I have to write the correct equation, the correct formulas, the reaction. So I'm going to underline, and I was really amazed last period. Like I said I, I, I wanted to make sure we get a better video of this today to put up for the people who are absent because there's a lot of mistakes, a ton of mistakes on this part. Now this is the end of the week. It's Thursday. Now I, we didn't have one snow day in here. By now I would hope you know what I mean when I want you to look at that problem, read it just for the words that tell me about the equation. What words tell me about the reaction here? Ignore everything else. It took me like five questions, five answers to get the right answer here. What words tell me about the equation? Read carefully. Ben, what do you think? Uh, reaction. A reaction. That's one of the words, but what? Specifically, what else? Produce. No, absolutely not. No. And I got that in air class. Produce, I got sodium chloride. I got, I even got 48.7. 
That's absolutely unnecessary at this point. Well, sodium. Sodium. <laughs> it is. This is the earth that happened. It's amazing how this happens all the time. And I think it stems back to, I'm going to sound like a really old-fashioned old here, which I know I'm getting there. Uh, but look at when we were in school, when we were in elementary school, I'm talking about, and you learned how to write sentences, we used to do what, something called diagramming sentences. I don't think they do that at all anymore. You used to have to actually write down, the, you would actually draw a line like this, and your subject would go here, and your predicate, it was called a predicate back then, now it's called a verb, and then you'd have like stuff coming up here, ad, uh, like a phrases and all this other stuff. And believe it or not, it really made you analyze the sentence. So you could tell what the adjective was uh, was modifying, what the adverb was modifying, and uh, I don't think they do this anymore. But you know what? It needs to be done. You've got to be able to analyze. I want you to tell me there's a subject, a verb, and an object in this question. It's the bare minimum you need. What is it? Who could make a sentence out of three words up there, basically three words? Emily, make a sentence out of what's going on. Give me the essence of what's going on. Um, sodium, sodium reacts, reacts chlorine. with chlorine. Yeah, sodium reacts with chlorine. That's the essence of the problem. Do you see it? It's not what I heard in this class and the last, produce. It's not sodium chloride. It's not when I asked a minute ago, even from... From Bo, the first word was react, and then what? I don't know. We're going to go backwards. It's sodium reacts with chlorine. That's what you're looking at. That's it's, It has to make sense to you. And that's why when the first time you read it, you look only for that. You look for the, what, the, what the reaction is in this case. And it's going to be sodium. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to shorten things up a little bit for you. And uh, by the way, several people in here have been doing this already, and, I, and I've been happy to see it without telling you. And, of course, I haven't taken off any points for this. People have been leaving out the word equation because it's really not necessary, is it? Do I really need a word equation in this case? I, I could just write down sodium plus chlorine. As long as I'm careful, right, I could write down sodium plus chlorine like that. And that's fine. Now, I'm not saying you should. If you like having the words there first, if you like having sodium plus chlorine and then writing underneath it the formulas, that's fine too. But some people have been already shortening it up, and that's fine. That's a good thing, actually. All right, so sodium reacts with chlorine. I don't need to be told sodium chloride. Matter of fact, I know what this word could know what this problem could have said to produce forty-eight point seven grams of product. Because once you know sodium reacts with chlorine, what does it have to form? What does sodium plus chlorine have to give you? Sodium chloride. You see what I'm saying? So that's why it was not necessary that. You, you were told in the problem it produced sodium chloride. It's also why you should be careful because a lot of times it may ask you for a product, but there's more than one product. There may be two products, but it didn't say both of them. So you have to be careful of that. All right. Uh, underneath it, I write the correct symbols, and I write them correctly. Diatomic chlorine, sodium's charge plus one, chlorine's minus one, although I would imagine there's no one out there who doesn't know salt as NaCl right now. I balance it with the two there to give me two chlorines and a two there, and everybody's happy. That's your first step. Second step, I'm going to go to red. And I've been doing this now for several days. What am I going to circle in red? Because this time, remember the whole point of this? The point of this is to get out of that, remember that Facebook meme? It said something like, uh, you know, purple aliens and all that stuff. That's what they read when they read. Remember that? Okay, we want to get away from that. So I want to break it down into steps. So I'm not just got this big jumble in my head. Second time I read it, I know I want to begin my stoichiometry. So this is going to tell me what's, how to begin the stoichiometry. How am I going to begin my stoichiometry? What will I look at this time, ignoring everything else? Jared? 48.7 grams of sodium chloride. Exactly. 48.7 grams of sodium chloride. Now, do me a favor and write this way over to the left and small. Because guess what? You're going to have three conversions by the time you're done here. Lots of sp stuff to fit into one line. So 48.7 grams of NaCl. Now, I may be a little confused at this point. And I bet you I will get this on the test. No one will get the next part right. I'm right, sorry. No one will get the next part wrong. What's obviously got to go on the bottom? Because it has to cancel. Grams of, grams of NaCl. No one's going to get that wrong. But you know what they'll get wrong? They'll look back up and they'll say, okay, what's it asking me for? Mass of sodium, and they'll just put grams of sodium right on top. And you cannot do that. And somebody say, well, why not? 
What did I say to remember when I got to this point? What is stoichiometry? What is it? Moles to moles. These coefficients right there, they are not a mass ratio. They are a mole ratio. I have got to use moles. Am I in moles yet? No. I only have grams. So what does my first step have to be here? Moles of NaCl. Yeah, I, I have to convert from grams to moles of NaCl. Okay. Bless you. One mole contains how many grams of NaCl? What will you do to get that mass? Add up Na and Cl, and you get 58.443. It's 58.443. I know, I, it's a mess. <laughs> Here, I'll make it even better. Not much better. Jeez, I can't make an eighth of that. All right. Notice I'm still in red here. I'm still in this first step. I'm not out of it yet. I, I'm saying not, not first step, second step, first conversion. Because all, right, all I've done is I've converted my mass into moles because that's what I need. And again, once again, I won't have trouble knowing what goes on the bottom here. What has to go on the bottom? I've canceled out of grams. What has to go on the bottom? Moles of NaCl. Now here comes what I'm going to change and see. Well, gee, i got to look back to the problem again. It's time to look back to the problem. I don't know what to go to next unless I look back there and in blue, circle what? We'll put a box around what? What? Sodium. Exactly. Just the word sodium. I don't necessarily care yet. I'm going to have to look one more time to see about that. Just the word sodium. Because I know stoichiometry, this step in stoichiometry has to be there. And that step is always moles to moles. Moles of what I have the moles of who I'm looking for, in this case, sodium. I'm looking for sodium. If you don't have moles to moles, and by the way, what fills these guys in? What do I use to fill them in? The coefficients. Coefficient of Na is 2. Coefficient of NaCl is 2. If you don't have that step there, it can't be right. Some of you may say, well, in this case, and by the way, I said this yesterday to this class, because as I was grading the previous classes, I said, be careful. You can get the right answer and still be wrong. Where's a good example of this? Notice the coefficients are both two. Had I forgotten to balance this equation, would I get the same and correct answer? If I had never balanced it with any numbers at all up there, what would I have? I'd have one over one here, right? I'd get the right answer, but I'd be wrong, and I would still lose the points for not balancing the equation. I could even skip this step and get the right answer in this case, right? Is that going to mean I'm not going to take off points for it? No. I'm still taking off points if you don't have that step there. It has to be there. Okay? All right. Now I have to look up one more time. Although I know darn well what goes on the bottom. What goes on the bottom of this one? Moles of NA. Moles of NA because it has to go on the bottom. It has to cancel. I, again, don't know what's on the top. By the way, do I always have to do this step? What word could be different in the problem? That would mean I wouldn't even have to do this step. Determine the... Moles. Yeah, if it said determine the moles, I'd be done. But unfortunately, it says determine the mass, and so I have to convert my moles of Na to grams of Na. And how do I do that? Here's another mistake people made. Saw it not in this class, but in the previous class. What goes next to moles? One. A one. Every time. Because I'm talking about the mass of one mole of sodium. What do people use there? What do they do? They put, you, they put the coefficients there. Do not use the coefficients more than once. You only use them in this step here. Second thing they did, they didn't put the coefficient in there, but you know what they went and did? They went and multiplied the mass of sodium by 2. That's the same thing as using the coefficient, people. You can't do that. Sodium's mass is 22.990. And it is not multiplied by 2. Now, some people just heard me say something completely different. Say, for example, this guy over here were, and don't do this because it'll mess you up. Say this were like, you know, Na2O. Did I say you don't use this two? No, I said you don't use coefficients. If I had to get the, if I had to convert him to grams, what would I have to add up to convert him to grams? Two NAs. Two NAs and one O, right? I still use subscripts. I just don't use the coefficients, okay? All right. So don't write that down because I was just confused. All right, I'm almost done. Get your calculator out. Multiply and divide all that out. Do you need to even multiply and divide by two? Is that necessary? Just skip that whole step. 
right? Because it's not, it's just going to be one anyway. What do you get for that answer? What did you get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Anybody got one? What do you got? Huh? Answer? Anybody? Somebody? 19.2 19 grams. 19 grams of NA. Does that sound good to everybody? Yeah. Everybody getting that? Okay. All right. Good enough. Now, before I go on, I already said this to the air class. Remember, I hinted ahead. Well, I'm going to hint ahead one more time for our last example we're going to do today. Last example, really, that you need to know to be able to do well on this test. There are two other things I'm going to cover. One's an extra credit thing. One's uh, limiting reactive, which will become evident in the lab tomorrow. But you're pretty much done at this point. Okay? Let me ask you this. What's one other thing, perhaps, that I could convert to besides moles and besides grams? Molecules and atoms. Exactly. Right. So let's do one more like that. And where can that go? That can go here or it can go there. All right? If I, let's just go through the possibilities. If I give you moles, and I ask for moles, how many steps will there be? Just one, right? If I give you moles, and I ask you for grams, how many steps will there be? Two. If I give you grams, and I ask you for moles, how many steps will there be? Two, but just in different places, right? And if I give you grams and ask you for grams, there'll be three. Same thing's true if I give you molecules and ask you for grams, or give you atoms and ask you for molecules, or something like that. All right, let's do it. Copy that one down. So the last one we're going to have is an official example in your notes. Obviously, we're doing other ones, and I have other stuff to do in the next couple of days. But if you could do these, these are the last one, pretty much the last one I'm probably going to tape besides the review. Because if you have these down, you've got them all. You've got what you need. There's still limiting reactant to cover. I forgot to tape that, too. But that I want to do after you do the lab, because you'll see it better there. For some of you guys, you have a double tomorrow, don't you? Yeah. I might even be able to do some of that tomorrow. Because that lab isn't that long. No question mark. Sorry. <laughs> oh, did you see that? It like appeared after I was. I can't rewind. I could re actually. I could rewind. It's like a ghost wrote the rest. Yeah, of I missed it when you did, when you did watch it. Again. That's all right. Um, all right. This is a tough one to actually read and understand the equation. Sometimes, okay. I want you to read. What am I going to underline that tells me about the equation? Everybody's looking there and going to have an answer in their head. Problem with this when people just wait for someone else to get it wrong. Think. What will I underline? What tells you? What's the essence of this? What's the subject, verb, and object of this sentence? What do you think, Jared? Calcium. Calcium. React. Reacts. FE2OTC. Yeah, a lot of crap in between, but that's the essence of the reaction. CA, and this time I am going to leave out the words, reacts with Fe2O3. Now, that brings us to the second hard part of this one. I look at my common ion sheet, and I know I'm going to get people who will look in the wrong place. So everybody get the common ion sheet out and find me. What reaction is this? What kind of a reaction is it? Think. Don't say it out loud. Look on the common ion sheet. Find the one that it's supposed to be. My guess is some people are going to pick the wrong one. Uh. Narrow it down. Is it one, two, three, four? Everybody needs to look at which one you think this guy is. And then apply it and figure out what happens. What do you think, Nikki? Well, I mean, let's, let, let's, let's, if you're not sure, let's narrow it down. Is it one, two, three, or four? No, it's not three. Three says reaction of, you know, in mass, you don't see any acid up here, right? It's not, not going to be three. Emily thinks she knows. <laughs> 
All right. So it's going to be number four? No. No, number two. No. One. one. We, you're out of my You're out of options, what? people. <laughs> it's, she said, three, four, two. That only leaves one. The answer is one. Why? Uh, well, let's let's go by process of elimination. Let's go with four. Oh, it does make sense. Okay, I got it. I get it. Okay, but, but you may get it right now, but I don't know if oh. everybody gets it. Four says halogens replacing other halogens. You see any halogens in here? Can't be four. Three says about acids and hydrogen. You see any acid or hydrogen in there? No. Two says water. Is, be, is things replace water? You see any water in there? No. Number one says replacement of a metal by a more active metal. And I told you this one was so tough. And the reason it's so tough is that you have to realize that both calcium and iron are metals. And calcium is the more active metal. So what will I get from this? What will happen here? I'll get calcium oxide plus iron, won't I? See it? Now, that would have confused the crap out of you guys if I hadn't been doing this one. You know, and that's why you wonder, wonder why we do homework, why we do worksheets. It's because... You may think, if I give you, if, if all I ever gave you was sodium plus chlorine, you know, sodium chloride, we'd always get the equation right, all right? But I'm going to give you harder ones. All right, uh, is that guy written correctly? Did I write calcium oxide correctly? Let's see, plus two for him, minus two for him. He's okay. Is iron diatomic? No, so he's okay. Is he balanced? No. Three O's. I'll just put a three there, right? No. I have to put it in the front. Can't change the subscript. All right, three calciums. Right there, right? Uh, forget anything else? Two irons. All right. That's just step one. Step two, red. <laughs> what am I going to circle in red that tells me how to begin my long process here? What am I going to circle? 2.50 times 10 to 24. Keep going. Exactly. And you have to put all that down or you're going to get lost in the process. Write very small and way over to the left. This one's even longer than the other one just because the word molecules and Avogadro's numbers takes up so much room. And you have to write all that crap out. If you don't, you're, in, you're going to get lost in the middle of this. Now, what has to go on the bottom? molecules of Fe2O3, okay? That has to go in the bottom because it has to cancel. Nobody's going to question that. The question is, what goes on the top? What do I have to be in to do stoichiometry? Moles, sure. So moles of Fe2O3 go on the top. One mole contains, remember Avogadro's number? 6.0, 10 to 24. 10 to 23rd, actually. Sorry. 6.022 to 10 to the 23rd. Okay. I am now in moles and ready to do the actual stoichiometry step. Okay, which is going to have moles of Fe2O3 on the bottom. And then I have to look again to the problem. This, again, to, to, to bring everything full circle, the reason we're trying, what we're trying to do with, with word problems is break them down. First way we broke it down, we, we figured out the equation. We looked for that. Secondly, we looked up again to figure out how to start the stoichiometry. Now, we got to look up again, in blue this time, to figure out how to end the stoichiometry. What am I trying to go to? Calcium. Yeah, just calcium. That's all I really need. Don't say grams of calcium because I can't go from moles to grams to something else. Moles of calcium. <laughs> and then it's going to be three. Three for calcium. And... One. The one for <laughs> iron oxide. Yes, the one. The one. That's, uh, You're the one. Apparently, that's how you say one in for one. Okay. Um, so I'm almost done. And by the way, I could be done if one word were different in that question. Moles. Right. If it said moles instead of grams, I'd be done right now. I just said equals. But it doesn't. It says grams. So I, although I know how to begin this next step, it has to be moles of calcium on the bottom. This guy asked me for grams, right? And so I'll put grams of calcium on the top. And how do I get that number? It's right up there. It's 40. the 40.08 atomic mass of calcium. Okay, get your calculators out. There's nothing you can skip here. 
plug all that stuff in, and what do you get for your final answer to this guy? Is that your final answer, or do you want to phone a friend? What is it? 499. 499? Did I get that? 499 grams of calcium. How about that? Yay! Yay. Now, I, I, want, I want to take this opportunity because it's probably the last you know, official class besides Living Reactive uh, that I'm going to be taping. Last one, to, just to sh give you an idea of how I'm going to grade this. These kind of problems are going to be worth anywhere from like 10 to 18 points a piece, which means we can only have about five, six of these, you know, not including the, uh, the chart. Why are, they worth so, why are they worth so much and where would you lose points and how could you do this? Well, I'm going to give you partial credit. Take a look. I mean, I'll, I could give you um, each one of these conversions would be worth either three or four points, depending. All right? So, like, it might be, if you have this coefficient wrong, it might be two off for that one. That one wrong might be two off. You could have one of them right and one of them wrong. Right? So, it'd be two off for each of those. Um, you know, this step might be worth just minus three because it's a conversion for grams and moles. This one might only be minus three for that. All of the stuff that applied to the way I graded these, the equations, whenever there was a compound to be written, that was two points. That was two points. Balancing was one point, I told you. All of that still applies. I haven't changed those rules. That's how I grade. When, well, I've given you a lot, most of your tests I've given back to you. I don't give all of your tests back. But if you were, anyone who wants to come and see their tests can see exactly where they lost those points. All right, very meticulous about that. So here's my point. Don't leave them blank. I will have a chance. You, you will have a chance to get a lot of partial credit on these. Okay. You may make some mistakes. You may have forgotten to balance it correctly. Will I punish you twice? No. Say you accidentally misbalanced this equation, and that was the only mistake you made, was just not balancing it correctly. You'd lose one point. You'll say, well, these numbers here were wrong. It should have been, uh, they, you put a 4 and a 2, and it should have been a 3 and a 1. You won't lose points for that. I know. Yeah, I'm so nice. Yeah. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> It'll ruin my reputation. All right, so... Keep that in mind. Don't leave them blank. Do as much work as you can on these because it will get you more points.